Uh, thank you all for joining again. And here we go with PRC Satillo and Stephanie, it's all yours. Thank you. Hi, thank you so much um, for your time. I enjoyed the previous presentation. I learned a lot. Um, and I'm glad you're here today. Uh, we'll be speaking about visual supports for AAC success. My name is Stephanie. I'm a speech language pathologist. I do work for PRC Sotillo, but within the smaller world of the Center for AAC and Autism, I'm a LAMP trainer there. I do want to disclose financial disclosures and non-financial disclosures are on the screen here, but I also want to disclose that I am not a VI specialist. I have a background in assistive technology and uh a AAC, extensive AAC, um, but my experience with VI comes through my practice and working closely with VI specialists. So what I'm sharing with you today is from my perspective as a speech language pathologist. Uh, I think that everyone here doesn't need this reminder, but I, I want to set us up by just reminding us that uh, the research and best practice really advocates for this idea that there, is, there are no specific prerequisites that someone must demonstrate before they are given access to AAC. And I like to preface, I like to kind of clarify that and just say, um, should also include robust AAC vocabulary systems. Now, when we have someone who has a vision impairment in particular, we do have to acknowledge that vision, uh, whether that be someone who is autistic and has a different visual sensory system. Maybe they uh, are hyper visually focused on things or have photophobia or someone who has uh, cortical or cerebral visual impairments um, <clears throat> or someone who has low vision or is blind. All of those things significantly impact communication development as a whole because communication development is multi-sensory. When it comes to vision impairments in AAC systems, I like to advocate that bigger and simpler is not always better. This was uh, an example of a board that you might see created for someone who has significant vision impairments with the idea that we'll make the buttons bigger, we'll use real symbols, uh, photographs, or simplified high contrast symbols. Neither good nor bad, but what I've learned over time is that we can really make some changes to an AAC system that allows us to continue to provide a large selection of vocabulary. So some of the things I'm going to show you are just ideas that you can apply to any AAC system. And then some of the uh, ideas I'm gonna show you apply specifically to PRC Sotillo products or language systems. Number one is just looking at how we can reduce the glare on a device. Most, uh, if you're with an iPad or if you have a tablet and you can identify the size of the tablet, you can buy screen protectors that have a matte finish. And this will help reduce the glare from overhead lights or outside sunlight. And just simply having a key guard on the device now the key guard I have as an example on this photo is clear, but you can get key guards that are not um, clear, that maybe are black, and that would also help reduce the glare. You can look to increase the contrast. LAMP Words for Life VI has um, a high contrast symbol set that is used and there is also a high contrast PCS symbol set that you can access through word power. These offer symbols that have been simplified and also the colors have been changed so that they offer more high salient colors and um, fewer color combinations. This picture on the left shows a custom key guard that was is available freely online for you to download and print on a 3D printer. And what I like about it is it shows the key guard was printed in black and there were white embellishments added for these key locations on the language system. Another 
place that you can look at increasing the contrast is in the message window. In Lamp Words for Life, uh, whether that is the regular lamp or Lamp VI, you can change the message window so that it has a high contrast yellow background. And there's also a setting that you can turn on that allows you to highlight the word as it's spoken. And you can change the colors there so that I have a red color chosen, um, but you can change it to different colors as well. Word Power also offers a high contrast message window as do um, the other PRC Sotillo language systems as well. One way that we can help our friends with vision needs is to how can we reduce visual complexity? And also how can we use color? People who have cerebral cortical visual um, impairments or CVI are often seeking preferred colors. And those preferred colors vary from person to person, but a large number of people prefer the colors yellow and red. So using those colors to change either the button background or changing the outline color of the button is nice to, to draw that visual attention to the words you're trying to highlight. And both word power, lamp words for life and the unity language systems have ways that you can hide and show buttons. So you can selectively focus on certain vocabulary at certain times, or you might have a user who benefits from having fewer vocabulary words available from the very beginning, and then over time you reveal more. You can look at increasing, changing the button size. Now, in my experience working with people with disabilities and complex bodies, my initial go-to was to immediately go to a larger button set. But what I've found over time is that when I have a language system that offers really consistent, the opportunity to develop very consistent motor plans and simple motor plans. So meaning there's only one to three movements your body has to make to access a word, a simplified motor plan, as well as consistent categories of word locations. I find that a lot of my users are able to access smaller buttons. However, uh, when you're first introducing an AAC system using a button boost feature, which is something that's available on the Accent with Lamp Words for Life, and then also playing around with what happens when you select the button. You can have an inverted color selection occur or red upon select is a specific feature that's available in word power. Um, those individuals that do ultimately require larger buttons and fewer options on a page I really like to go to the Unity Symbol Sets language system that's available on PRC Sotillo devices. The, the Unity language system allows you to go down as, four, as, as few as four buttons or as many as 144 buttons. And the symbol set remains the same and the general location and organization of the words and categories of words is also maintained as you progress or move between those different button configurations, which is really nice because you might start with a fewer set of buttons with someone and then realize over time they really can handle more and the change might not be as drastic because the symbols will be more familiar as well as the locations. When we think about communication, one thing we often forget is that those of us who speak with our mouths use a tactile feedback system. It's called how, how our tongue and lips and mouth feel when we say a certain word. And we developed a, a tactile landscape in our mouths as we speak. And if you've ever had Novocaine and you try to speak afterwards, all of a sudden your brain is like, what's going on? Everything's wrong. So I'm a big advocate for everyone having access to a key guard or a touch guide, um, because as someone is learning how to communicate with their finger, that key guard or touch guide begins to build a tactile landscape for their brain and body to refer to as they're learning words. I hope I've explained that well. So thinking about how you might embellish tactile feedback on a key guard, the picture on the left shows um, a, a system where the mom actually glued these little 
plastic shapes to her son's device, which was divided up into quadrants. This little boy was completely blind. And she also provided some texture from the back side of the touch guard. So the circles have some um, different textures showing one was um, fuzzy, one was scratchy, and one was smooth. So that as he was tactilely orienting on the device, he kind of had a grid configuration with additional embellishments going on. The picture in the middle is a standard iPad with a key guard on it. We used Gorilla Tape to cover the entire key guard and then cut out certain words that this little one, this little blind boy was learning and also added some tactile embellishments, a little fluffy pom-pom and some different shapes and textures of Velcro for words that he was highly interested in finding and using. The Nova Chat is one of our devices that offers um, haptic feedback. Now it's very subtle when I've played around with it and you really kind of feel it from behind the device. But what that does is when you select a button, it, the device will vibrate just ever so slightly. So for certain users, that might be very helpful. Another feature that you might explore is auditory fishing. And this is a feature, a setting that you turn on in the device where the device will read auditory prompts. And the prompt is going to be the label, um, the word that's listed as the label. So when you press the button one time, you'll hear in a quite usually a quieter and unique voice, the word. So someone can um, wear headphones or just listen very carefully to the lower volume voice and as they navigate and fish around to find the word. And then when they tap the button again, a second time, it will speak the word out loud so that their communication partner can hear. I do feel very strongly about training um, and learning how to support AAC users from an intervention approach. We can have the best um, language systems and the best hardware, but if we're really not sure how language is developing and um, how we can support that development, uh, the best systems will fail. So I have to put a plug in for the language acquisition through motor planning class that really goes into detail about the neurological differences that might make it challenging for someone to develop communication, whether with their mouth or with their finger, and how we can support those individuals by really deeply understanding the neurological processes that are happening when communication and speech is occurring and developing. And this was just a quick blast. I'm looking, I keep looking at the time to make sure I'm, I'm on track. I do offer a two hour live webinar and there happens to be one coming up in October on October the 4th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And this is available on the um, our platform called AAC Learning Journey. And I just invite you to attend this. Parents and students can attend for 50% off and the price is, is very affordable to begin with. So I'd love to see you there. I have provided a resource guide. I realize I've provided a lot of ideas and intervention things for you to consider. So I tried to capture those on a resource guide for you so that you didn't have to take so many notes. Um, so the QR code, and hopefully we can put that in the chat window for you as well, the PDF for the resource guide. I tried to make sure to give you links for everything. If you want to try some of the ideas that I've mentioned and some of the language systems that I showed you, I encourage you to reach out to your PRC Saltillo consultant. We can get the link in the chat window that will take you to our website where you can put in your zip code. And our consultants are available to meet with you in person if time and distance allows or virtually to consult and help you get resources in hand to try. And then please do visit our website, AAC Learning Journey, for more training opportunities. Um, and if you're coming to ATIA, I will be there and I will be speaking. I have a presentation. Um, we'll be going into a case study uh, looking at LAMP Words for Life VI and going more in depth on the topics that I've talked about today. So thank you for your time. 